first night began at sunset completely in the dark let's see what i can do with uh, eight hours of sunlight As you are hiking and you see a boulder outcrop like this and you're in the batholith it's worth walking from the next peak over to check it out this has mega potential for crystal genesis of uh you know collector specimen type stuff sometimes they can be hidden in places like this especially where some mud is collected. Big old vein. And there's the quartz. So we've got everything we need. Now we just want to find one terminated quartz crystal and then it's game on. I'm just right around to the backside and you can see this indention right here. You can get grains as large as you want and they can be productive, but if you see a boulder, especially one that's larger, and you get a really good picture of how the whole thing structure is uh, founded, then when you notice these little uh, pockets, you are in a super hot spot. So I'm gonna walk around this entire formation and I can almost guarantee that I'm gonna find some sort of terminated quartz. <laughs> Also super recommend binoculars. You can be 50 feet away and see something almost as if it were right in front of you. I've found many crystals just because of these. Another example in the same formation of ultra large class size and following quartz. Obviously the bigger the formation of quartz raises the likelihood a great deal. I'm gonna take you on a little vein tour. So it goes up that way. And then we have a, a large vein coming down this way. Way of quartz, and it is hexagonal, meaning it was crystal forming. And then we have an intersection here. And then we have an intersection where the first vein that went up and this one meets as well. You can see the feldspars are actually having distinguished crystal structure as well. I just found this beneath that rock and you can see that there's some planes right here where it grew up against another very well-developed crystal. I'm gonna keep following it down, it seems to be getting better. Mediocre intro I know, but in future videos I demonstrate with a lot greater depth and detail the relationship between topography, geology, and mineralogy. Nevertheless, this is all the video that I had leading up to the discovery of the very first small pocket in which you're about to see that I found a clump of grass in, pull that out, and you'll notice what I find in there. And then I find a large pocket, and this is all within the periphery of what we were just seeing in the video. The main thing that I'm trying to illustrate here is pattern recognition. Pay attention to the textures in the granite, the consistency, the frequency of veins, these little indentions. All of these details are what led me to the discovery of a pocket. I just poked it into the dirt and uh, that's how far it went. This hole is not even deep, it's just still popping out. feel something and it's most definitely terminated. It keeps on going. I really believe that the crystals aren't gonna run out of the ground. I dropped a crystal so I came down to get it and I noticed, what's that? And that. And that, and that, and there's just tons of them all over the ground right here where the rock has been eroding and the pockets have become exposed. See, that 
That's about the size of hole that I started with. Be sure to move things around. This one was just sitting on the surface in this pocket. And then I just wiped all this felt far out. And I see one more back there. That is music to my ears. Don't get me wrong, I love moss, but I'm finding a definite correlation uh, between the moss growing in spaces and crystals beneath, such as It's exactly how I found it. And just like that, a pocket is born. See it unravel in part two.